Uh, so, as we've just heard, the economic trajectory has been good. The political news, less good. So let's kind of just start off there. The talks in Switzerland uh, on reuniting the country didn't produce an outcome that may, maybe uh, people were hopeful of at the beginning of the process. Just A, I'd be interested to get your reaction to that. And B, when you think about moving the economy forward from here, had you built in, in any expectation that actually we would see some sort of reunification? None at all, actually. Uh, I mean, it is, it is regrettable. Um, uh, it was a major effort. It, um, it failed to deliver result. Um, obviously, it takes two to tango. Um, uh, and um, uh, we still have to see tan tangible steps. Uh, which will match uh, uh, the words on yep. behalf of everyone uh, in, in the direction of making it happen. But then, uh, I, I repeat, no, none at all. We made no assumptions. Uh, we were operating and we continue to operate with the, uh, uh, with the hypothesis that we shall not be able to resolve the Cyprus problem immediately. Uh, uh, the recovery of the Cyprus economy, which has been strong enough, uh, um, uh, happened. Uh, under the current circumstances, yep. the significant influx in foreign investment, which we are witnessing, uh, um, again, uh, did not happen because of uh, uh, an imminent re reunification, but actually because of the strong fundamentals and excellent prospects of the Cyprus economy. And that's where we continue to focus our attention. To, to your point, Minister, you just issued a seven-year bond in June uh, at the lowest yield ever for a euro benchmark bond for you, 2.8%. Uh, um, you've had economic growth uh, forecast to be 3.1% this year. Um, is that sustainable? Are you in an economically uh, positive, sustainable situation here? Uh, well, well, I think so. Um, um, and there are two reasons for this. I mean, we did have high growth rates in the past, but they were uh, they, they were fueled on the one hand by um, an excessive public deficit and on the other hand by an equally unsustainable credit expansion. Um, uh, none of the two uh, factors uh, exist today. So since 2014 we are operating with, an, with a balanced budget, so no deficit spending at all which would uh, offer a temporary boost to economic, uh, economic activity. And uh, the banking sector, while it is able to to, to offer financing to the economy, uh, well, uh, is not exhibiting anything near an, an unsustainable credit expansion. So um, th these two factors, I, I think, um, confirm that the growth is real, it is strong, and it is sustainable. It is a result of the excellent performance of key sectors of the economy, key productive sectors of the economy, tourism, shipping, uh, business and financial services, um, energy being a sector which is uh, up and coming. So uh, um, this is where we continue to focus our attention, creating a business-friendly economic environment for this uh, sectors of the economy to continue perform strongly. Okay, so, so the, the setup is good, the economic trajectory is, is, is looking fairly favourable at the moment. One thing we do hear though is, is you could be even more aggressive when it comes to labour market reforms. You could be even more aggressive uh, when it comes to providing that, uh, that business platform that you've talked about. Would you agree with that or do you think actually the current rate is acceptable? No, I would agree. I mean, I mean, I mean I'm, I'm, I'm in politics. I have been a government minister tasked with promoting reform, and I yeah. wish uh, uh, we, we I, I wish it was possible for us to uh, promote our, our agenda even faster. But you know, that's democracy, uh, yeah. and we have to go through the process, and we have to uh, win the uh, support of the parliament and other stakeholders on, on each and every issue. Um, so. Uh, uh, I think it is inevitable that not everything will move us fast, uh, uh, but the excellent progress has been made. I mean, you mentioned the, the labour market. Uh, I think it is flexible enough, um, uh, reacting uh, posit positively to the recovery. Uh, let me tell you that unemployment had peaked at 17 per cent. It is already down to 11. Uh, th this is an indication of a labour market uh, being flexible and reacting uh, uh, positively to the to the economic recovery, so uh, I think we are on the right track. But yes, I mean I wish uh, uh, that uh, we could move faster, but that's politics. Yeah, well, I, I, politics is difficult, especially as you approach a new election in uh, I think February of next year. 
obviously the labor market reforms that are most difficult deal with retirement and pension reforms. Do you think you're going to be able to, to keep pushing for more reforms in that direction as we approach this next election? I mean, the, the reform momentum is, uh, uh, is, is permanent. They, and they actually think that the a reform effort uh, doesn't have that does not have an expiry date. So uh, we are continuing to continue to make progress. Let me tell you that over the last weeks uh, uh, we saw uh, a major reform regarding healthcare going through. Uh, we also uh, managed to see through uh, uh, an indefinite extension in uh, public sector hiring or allowing obviously for exceptions. This will help in the long-term sustainability of public finances. So yes, we are, we are maintaining the, the effort, the momentum, um, uh, even though we are already in the final months of our, our, our administration. But I am confident that the, uh, the reform effort will recommence uh, uh, immediately after the elections. Minister, there is much being made of the fact that Europe is on the front foot, that the Eurozone, with, with the arrival of Mr Macron, has an opportunity to take a big step forward. There's, there's a lot of kind of, there's a big halo effect surrounding yes. him and the Eurozone as a result. Do you, do you feel that as well? Uh, well, I, I have, I have all uh, myself. I have been encouraged by the electoral victory of President Macron. Um, a very good signal for Europe. Um, that said, um, I would in fact be cautious uh, in making um, um, a dash uh, in the direction of further uh, European integration and especially, um, uh, especially on, uh, on, uh, on the economic and financial agenda. In fact, I think that we should be cautious uh, that any additional step should be well thought, um, not made, uh, um, uh, let's say, uh, without securing a very strong popular support. So uh, I think that's the key. Uh, I'm not against making additional steps, but only if the steps are well thought, that they encourage economic and, economic and business activity in the EU, that they stay clear of uh, uh, excessive and unnecessary regulation and uh, uh, bureaucracy which burdens economic activity. So, so that would be one precondition. And at the same time, uh, ensuring strong democratic legitimacy, strong political support. We cannot um, take the risk of making another uh, mistaken step which will widen the gap uh, between uh, European integration and the European people. We shall end up um, with an EU without people. Uh, and, and that's the major risk that we should um, uh, that we should uh, uh, always right. bear in mind.